I'm Sadie Mae with the Awesome Orange and recently I got a new laser, a Thunder Nova 35100 CO2 laser. And today I'm going to show you how I made three stamps for my business. A small logo stamp, a business card stamp, and a giant stamp to make t-shirts. Let's get started. First up is a small logo stamp. I'm starting with this one so that I can dial in the settings without wasting a lot of material. So step one was to import an SGV formatted file of the design that I'm wanting for my stamp into Lightburn. If you don't have an SVG file, you can simply create one by using a program like Canva. Once you have your file in there, you wanna go ahead and resize it to the size of the stamp that you want. Once you have it to the size that you want, you wanna go up to that little triangle type symbol and invert or mirror image the logo because we're making a stamp. Then we wanna create the shape of our stamp. For this little one, I'm gonna be using a circle. So I just create a circle around it and then I'm going to select both those different pieces and center them using that little target icon you see above. Next, I'm going to select both of those once again and make them the same colored layer. Um, yeah, make them the same color. So they're both red in this case. Then for the circle, we want to go ahead and duplicate that. And it'll be sitting right there on top of it. So I want to recolor that one to a different color, in this case, green. We do this because we want to be taking away the negative space and leaving the A with the leaves as the stamp portion. Then I recenter those back together. Now it's time to put in our settings. Okay, so for my first attempt, I'm gonna set the fill speed at 100 speed, 60 power. And then I double click on it and go in and change the uh, liner interval to 0.60 and then go to advanced and change the ramp length to 0.0797 and then to cut the line or the circle around it i set it to 8 speed and 90 power so let's go ahead and see how that first attempt went way too much power so on the second attempt i went with a speed of 500 and a power of 30 for the engrave and a for the line 20 speed with 90 power and that looks really good but it wasn't raised quite enough so I tried for a third attempt with the speed of 235 power for the fill and then for the line 10 speed 55 power and that third attempt as you'll see right here came out just right so too much not enough and just right. Now let's get this stamp cleaned up so we can test it out and see how it works. My first attempt, I just used a old toothbrush and some soap and water and it got it pretty clean but it was leaving quite a bit of the soot on there and I wanted to try a different way to get all of that off so it doesn't affect the stamping on it. So I researched a little bit and found that WD-40 is the best way to remove that and it came out super clean. So I added it to a little stamp block and let's test it out. Oh yeah, we made our first stamp. It looks awesome, except I didn't want the circle around it. So we'll fix that on the business card stamp. So we start this one the same way. I imported a file that I created in Canva. Uh, the file was an SGV file. Um, sometimes when you create them in Canva, they come over a little wonky. So just make sure you clean up any discolorations like I have here before we get started. Then I resized it, grouped all those words and letters together, and then we go ahead and invert it. And for this one, I didn't wanna create a big giant shape around it because that would be a lot of material that we'd have to engrave. So I used the offset tool to create a outline just until the pieces were touching. And in this case, it was 0.25. Next, we went ahead and duplicated the outside line as before. 
but this time we're gonna make that one slightly bigger so that the cut line is inside the engraved line and we don't get that line around our stamp. Next, we're gonna select the colors for the different layers for the engrave or fill layers. So the red, we want the outside line shape to be the red as well. So the engrave goes all the way out there and then the blue line is the cut line. And then for the settings, just a reminder, we're gonna do 200 speed and 35 power. And then for the cut line is 10 speed and 55 power, the line interval 0.060 and the ramp length of 0197. The ramp length is good, so it helps our stamp from not squishing when we stamp it. Then always preview it before and make sure the pink is what you want your stamp to be. Send it over to the laser and you've got your stamp. Clean it up the same way before. And in this case, I created an engraved block so I know what it was. And it even does these tiny, tiny letters and look how good it comes out. Oh yeah, new business cards. Now let's make a t-shirt stamp. This one's gonna be big. So I loaded in a brand new piece of the rubber, loaded in the logo the same and formatted the same as the last stamp, sent it over to my laser, and started engraving and cutting it out. I will say that I did change one thing on the settings with this stamp because it was gonna be going into fabric. I wanted the print to be slightly deeper. So I did a fill of the 200 speed with a 55 power to get it a little bit deeper. So 35 or 55 worked out great. Then I got this cleaned up with the WD-40 again and then glued the rubber to a wooden block. I did use this little tool here to make sure everything was lined up. So when I do go to stamp these, I know that everything will be level in the line. Then I did engrave the other side of the block. You'll see here in a second that I did accidentally engrave it upside down. So I'm still getting used to my new laser, but there's so many awesome things you can make with it. So let's test out making this shirt. I got an ink and some ink roller and tried it on paper, and now we're going for the shirt. And surprise, it turned out awesome. I'm absolutely loving my new Thunder Nova Laser 35100. I've got my logo stamp, I've got my business card stamps, and I got a t-shirt stamp. If you have any questions on making stamps or my laser, go ahead and leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Thanks for watching. Remember, build loud, build wild, and have an awesome day.